Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On the show this morning, as usual, we are going to have two hot topics. The first one is the statement that only two Nigerian states can survive without PAC funds, that is the federal allocation uh, fund. And then uh, we also have a story that court stops uh, CBN from releasing allocation to River State. So we'll be looking at that as well to see the implication of that action. In the meantime, we are going to have our top trending issues as usual, and then we will go to the press uh, to see what headlines made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. It promises to be a wonderful day. We do hope that you're going to be a part of it to the end, and we do wish you a very, very uh, wonderful day ahead. In the meantime, we'll take a short break, look at the quote for the day, and then return in earnest. Our quote for today is from Chris Grosser and he says, Opportunities don't happen, you create them. Opportunities don't happen, you create them. Okay, that is, uh, uh, those are the words of Chris Grosser this morning and uh, very, very important words for us. Uh, so many people just wait around to see if they're going to have luck to uh, achieve what they're going to achieve. It is you who will, uh, will put in a lot of effort for that opportunity to come your way. You are the one who will be where you should be for the opportunity to come. You're looking for a job. You are the one who will have to read the papers or go to the internet to look for a, way, a job. Uh, if there are job uh, um, placements anywhere, if there are vacancies anywhere, you are the one who will move around with your, your CV or pass it to a lot of people. Uh, whether it's online or the hard copies and all that. You are the one who, first of all, started to go to school uh, to learn whatever you are going to learn. And when I say school, I don't even just mean the formal education. Sometimes you get hands-on learning because you are preparing yourself. That's why some people define luck as um, preparation um, meeting with opportunity. When opportunity meets with preparation, then you can call it luck. Uh, it doesn't just come like that. Well, in, in very few, pa uh, very few uh, cases, you will just not understand how a particular thing happened to a particular person and you, you feel like he doesn't deserve that. Uh, that one uh, may be what we attribute to grace. And in Nigeria, we believe so much in God. Yes, God still has a hand in what you're going to do. But even that God that has a hand in your affairs, most times you need to pray to God and say that, let me have a breakthrough. And a breakthrough comes where you least expected it. So you need to create your own opportunities. If you have... Um, Phone numbers, for instance, on your phone, how are you oiling them so much so that uh, something can come out of it? Or do you just have them as contact or they are really your go-to people in your phone that you have? Maybe you just have um, those names there. Yeah, anywhere you go, you could just drop a name. I am connected to this person and all that. But they really not, are not your friends. They really are not your contacts. They are just phone numbers that happen to be on your phone. What am I saying? I'm saying that opportunities will come, but most of the time you need to create them. You need to be where you need to be. You need to prepare yourself so that when the opportunity comes, you can embrace it. There's no need having an opportunity that you cannot use. I, have a, I had a friend once, he's late now. Uh, he was so, so good uh, politically. He was so serious. He, was, he put in his very best. And when the governor for that state won the election and he said, you're my, one of my first persons to settle. And he called him into his office and said, I'm going to make you a commissioner, bring your papers. And the guy was just scratching his head. Why? Because he did not even have a degree at that time. And he needed, the governor needed someone with a degree to hold a very lucrative uh, portfolio, but he couldn't have it. The opportunity came but he couldn't use it. So how prepared are you now for the opportunity 
of that dream job, of that dream business, of that dream uh, that you have had all your life. You need to put in up to uh, uh, at least 80% and every other thing can be added onto you. So uh, that's it for the quote for today. Uh, we'll just go straight on to the top trending issues. The first one is Reps passed sexual harassment bill proposing 14 years jail term. Interesting, the Nigerian House of Representatives has passed a bill targeting sexual harassment by educators in tertiary institutions proposing a jail term of up to 14 years for offenders. The legislation aims to protect students from uh, exploitation by their professors addressing a long-standing issue within the educational sector. In addition to penalties, the bill requires institutions to implement anti-harassment policies and educational programs that promote awareness and prevention. This approach is intended to foster safer academic environments and encourage reporting without fear of retaliation. The bill reflects a comprehensive governmental effort to address sexual and gender-based violence with a focus on creating a cultural shift within educational spaces. The legislation's passage follows a collaborative effort between Nigeria Senate and House uh, harmonizing previous drafts into unified law with significant support from both chambers. Okay, um, this is a really good one. It's, it's very good for, um, for, for students to go to school without any fear of harassment because there's a law backing them. I do hope that this law provides for everything. I heard when the, 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 the person who brought the bill was defending the bill and he said that um, even when uh, there is consent, when there is a, a gap between who is giving the consent and who is asking for the consent, then there is still a problem. So if a lecturer and a student are involved, uh, you cannot say it's consent because you have an advantage over the student. Uh, the student can give consent just because uh, the student needs to, otherwise you may fail her or you may do one or two things uh, to make sure that she does not graduate, especially the girls, they do not graduate. So consent cannot be an excuse, that's one thing they said. I do also hope that there will be something that will protect the lecturers as well uh, from some of these ladies who will not even want to read and they want to take advantage of the weaknesses of this lecturer because no matter what you see, uh, uh, a man is a man and so many people have weaknesses. I'm not saying what they do is good and because they, they have to fall because they are men. But when these women want to prey on the men as well, the lecturers as well, and it is proven that they are coming on the lecturers so hard, even if they do not fall, is there a penalty as well uh, for these people who try to to intimidate, not intimidate now, to tempt these people into falling and doing their bidding. Because whether you like it or not, there's also that reality. So any, when a student comes to tempt the lecturer, what penalties will be given to this, parent, uh, this student? I'd like to uh, know that as well. So that the, the student will be cautious, the lecturer will be cautious, and there are penalties on both sides. Uh, I would love to hear uh, that as part of the bill. Uh, I'm not saying any man uh, should give in to whatever kinds of temptation, but when the temptation comes, even if you don't fall, there should be a, a way you can say, get behind me, Satan, by law, uh, so that that student maybe uh, will be expelled as well, or will be suspended, or whatever, um, or may meet to repeat a year or something. There should be a penalty. Uh, everybody should not, or anybody should not just go scot-free because in some cases, everybody just has a hand in these matters. So the lecturers should be wary of taking advantage of students. Students also should be wary of uh, tempting the lecturers. It should be both ways, and we will have a clean, uh, especially tertiary institution in our country, especially tertiary education, rather, in our country. Uh, we also know that these things don't only happen. These, uh, Taking advantage of students don't only happen in, in tertiary institutions. Even the secondary school, it also happens. So I hope that this law also covers secondary, uh, secondary schools, even primary schools. 
uh, in some weird uh, circumstances or weird cases, we've seen primary school uh, pupils being molested by their teachers and all that. So this law should not end in universities or colleges of education or polytechnics or any higher institution. It should come down to secondary school, primary school as well. And let's see how that goes. And even it should be even stronger when it comes to secondary and primary school. Because all the people in primary school, for instance, are minors. And then secondary school, most of them are minors as well, if not all of them, because uh, it's usually below 18 that they are in secondary school. So tertiary institution, if we can have 14 years, then in secondary school it should be more, and in primary school, even higher. Okay, the second top trending issue that we have is that court grants bail to reps Equeche for assault charges. Remember the case of uh, the House of Reps, do you know who I am? In fact, there are t-shirts already uh, for that. The Federal High Court in Abuja has granted bail to rep Equeche in the amount of 500,000 Naira following an assault charge. The decision was made during a hearing on Monday where the court also mandated that Equeche provides a reliable surety. Reps Equeche representing the constituency of Ika Federal uh, constituency was accused of assaulting a fellow party member which has led to significant public attention and scrutiny. The allegations surfaced after a reported altercation that raised questions about the conduct of public officials. Uh, following the court's decision, Equeche expressed his gratitude and vowed to comply with all legal requirements. He maintained his innocence, asserting that the accusations were politically motivated. The court's ruling allows a quetcher to continue his legislative duties while awaiting further proceedings in the case. This development has sparked mixed reaction among constituents and political analysts who are closely monitoring the implication of this case on his political career. Okay, um, if, if, if there is another case with uh, a party member somewhere, it's new, to a lot of people, but the, the real case that Nigerians are talking about is the fact that he uh, assaulted um, a, a, an, a driver, yes, a delivery driver who came to deliver snails to him. I don't know whether they were cooked snails or there were snails he was trying to raise or something. The report just says snails uh, from a vendor and then he could not come to collect the snails because he is a reps member. Uh, even though they were very close and he was lounging somewhere, uh, it wasn't as if he was um, doing something official. He was just maybe reading a paper uh, outside and then because he was asked to come get what he was supposed to get, which is professional enough if you ask me, uh, he said he could make the driver disappear, tore his shirt, slapped him and it was on camera. So. Well, this is what we have seen. We don't know how many other things he did um, or he has done uh, where we are not watching. We don't know who else among the National Assembly members who has this kind of habit but has not been unfortunate enough to be recorded. Uh, but these people should know that we are the ones who gave them that job. We are the ones with the power to take it away from them or to continue giving it to them. Even though they have made poverty a, a weapon against the people themselves, so much so that people who misbehave cannot be recalled from the National Assembly, uh, even though we know that uh, we have those provisions in the Constitution, uh, we still know that, you know, somehow, somehow, when you begin to, to sow the seed of uh, badness, if, if you allow me to say that for lack of another word, one day they will come hunting you and then you'll find yourself outside the corridors of power and everybody kind of, uh, kind of forgets you uh, when that time comes. We've seen so many people, even speakers of houses of assembly, uh, members of reps and um, senators and all that, that fell from grace and today they are just ordinary people like us. So whatever you're sowing, whatever you're putting into the political space, uh, maybe someday will come back to haunt you. It is very, very disturbing to hear someone we sent to the National Assembly telling one of us, I can make you disappear. I wonder how many people have disappeared at his hands and at the hands of other people who feel that they have absolute power. Well, 
for Kweche. If Kweche he has been caught. We do hope that we will catch every other one that has been doing this as well. And for those who are holding that integrity of being National Assembly members, we commend you. Keep on doing the good work. But for the people who have become arrogant because they think that they are where they can talk to the, um, the Inspector General of Police anytime they want, they can talk to the Chief of Army Staff anytime they want and have them do their bidding, well, one day we'll find you out just like we found out this House of Reps member. Okay, the final top trending issue is that the FCCPC has uncovered a cartel inflating goods prices nationwide. Uh, the FCCPC is the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. Uh, it has revealed that the discovery or the, has revealed the discovery of a cartel responsible for artificially inflating the prices of essential goods across the country. This announcement comes as part of the FCCPC's ongoing efforts to ensure fair competition and protect consumers from exploitative practices. In a statement issued by the Commission, it was noted that extensive investigations had led to the identification of several businesses engaged in collusion to manipulate prices, thereby adversely affecting consumers and the overall market. The FCCPC emphasized the, that these activities violate the provisions of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act. The Commission has urged consumers to report any suspicious pricing behaviors to help combat these illegal activities. As part of its commitment to transparency and accountability, the FCCPC plans to impose strict penalties on the businesses involved once sufficient evidence is gathered. This revelation has sparked discussions among stakeholders regarding the impact of such cartels on the economy and the importance of regulatory measures to protect consumers. Uh, the FCCPC is poised to take decisive action to dismantle the cartel and restore fair pricing in the market. Wow, I'd like to clap for the FCCPC. Um, well, I have a report to make. You said, uh, if we see something, we say something. I have a report to make. NNPCL is doing that just right now. Because if you say you have discovered a cartel, well, very good, prosecute them, do whatever you need to do, name and shame them, let us know them. But we do know how so many things in Nigeria are tied to the fuel price. And NNPC is... Uh, is hiking the price maybe almost on daily basis. Now we have like uh, uh, 1,060 naira or so per liter of fuel. And that is connected to a lot of things going up. For instance, just two years ago, if you moved from the very beginning of Lagos as it is, Ojodu Bega, to a co-hotel in, in uh, VI, Co hotel roundabout in VI, you paid 300 naira. So if I was, I were a trader carrying, let's say, um, moi moi to a co hotel, and now I'm paying 1,500 naira if I'm lucky, what do you think will be the result on the moi moi I'm carrying to a co hotel to sell? Because I use that because uh, so many times I've seen people coming from as far as that area, um, uh, Ojodubega with this moi moi that I'm talking about to a co-hotel roundabout to sell. So if you, you are paying 1,500 naira for a journey you were, we're making for 300 naira, and then you're buying the beans to make this moi moi now at a price that is at sometimes 10 times what you used to buy two years ago, what do you think will be? What kind of cartel are you talking about when the thing that made everything to go up is just within your reach you know what it is the fuel has gone up it's a problem in nigeria the dollar is um the naira is nothing compared to the dollar dollar right now it's almost two thousand naira you're not arresting the 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 cbn people who are bringing the policies that are making a life unbearable you're not talking to the nnpcl that is making nigerians to groan all the time and now once nnpcl adds any price to, to fuel, every other marketer does the same thing and even more. So what are we talking about? What kind of cartel are we talking about? So let's know, the, let's know what you're doing with the government cartel that we are seeing right now. And then if you can do something about them, then go after the other cartels that you have caught. But, you know, it's hypocrisy to say that you have found a cartel when we know 
that if I go back to my community, I have no concern with any cattle. I have a concern with what goes into my farm as an agrarian community. What goes into my farm? What do I, what do, I do to make sure that I have a good yield next year? Do I have the farm input uh, within my reach? Can I still buy them? The things that I used to buy for maybe a thousand naira, I'm buying now for seven thousand or ten thousand naira. So if I use these things to plant my farm, uh, if I used even the labor to plant my f farm, it has gone up maybe ten times. You think I will sell the same goods the same way I was selling at the time when the price was down? So what are you talking about, cartel? What do they do? Name them, shame them, tell us what they do so that we will avoid them and also go after the NNPCL that is making life unbearable. And every cartel, cartel member within the oil sector, go after them. Let's see how much you can fight and we will be right behind you. Go after the people who are bringing policies that are that's making the Naira to, to plummet uh, to the extent that it is right now. How much was the Naira uh, a few years ago? How much is it right now to a dollar? It's 1,700 and something uh, on the parallel market and maybe 1,600 and something on the official market. So what are you doing about that? Let's not be hypocrites. Let's just do the right thing. But we applaud you if you have found a cartel. Prosecute them. Like I said, name them, shame them. Let's know them. Uh, let's know the names of these people, not just the companies. Who are the people behind this? Prosecute them. Let's Nigerians see. But Nigerians, as far as they are concerned, know that fuel price is causing a lot of this inflation that we are seeing. The dollar rate is also causing a lot of this inflation we are seeing because everything, almost everything is tied to that. And then we keep importing all the time. So what do you expect? So while we applaud you on one hand that you have found a cartel which you have not uh, named to us, we, we find this all the time, uh, government agencies saying that uh, if we open our mouths to say something, Nigeria will burn. Nigeria is burning already if you don't know. So say these things, let us know who is doing it and let us know the action you are taking against these people. So that when we see this, maybe we do not know that that is an activity that leads to inflation, we can know that, oh, this is what FCCPC did, or this, this is what they said, and then these people are also doing it, so we are going to report it to the relevant authorities. And then after that, make yourself available to us. Give us the numbers to call, give us the website to go to, and give us the confidence that when we report these people, you are going to take action. It's as simple as that. I'm just a common Nigerian feeling the bite of this economy and thinking that my woes come from a particular place, but now you're telling me that's not where it comes from. So let's do the needful on both sides. Well, that's all for Top Trending Issues this morning. It's been interesting. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.